Stop one second. Look at that. That is an Aura Ring. And the company Dexcom, a continuous glucose monitor company, has invested $75 million into this company. The two have entered into a strategic partnership and Dexcom put in a $75 million strategic investment into Aura's Series D funding. Aura is now valued at $5 billion. So why are these two companies teaming up? Why is a continuous glucose monitor company wanting to bring their readings from their customers into a fitness and lifestyle tracker or a ring into that ecosystem. Well, I'm gonna get into that and a lot more and all about where these two companies come from and why this deal matters. I mean, $75 million isn't spare change. That is a lot of money. And I think that these companies see a lot more potential other than just bringing readings into this ecosystem. The two say the partnership aims to quote, improve customers metabolic health by integrating Dexcom glucose data with vital sign, sleep, stress, heart health, and activity data from the Aura Ring. Apple, Samsung, and others are working on technology that you wear and it uses some form of technology to get those glucose readings without going into the skin. Right now, Dexcom's G7 goes into the skin with a little sensor, a needle that puts it in. Their other sensors do that as well. And there's also an implantable continuous glucose monitor from Eversense that needs to be put in with a procedure. Both are invasive. What if this partnership between Dexcom and Aura is to potentially one day bring glucose monitoring technology into this tiny ring? Well, we're gonna get into that today. And I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments what you think this partnership's gonna look like. What will the integration of CGM levels into the Aura Ring ecosystem look like? And what do you think these companies want out of each other? I'm excited to hear what you think because odds are I didn't think of everything. Welcome to Diabet Tech. I'm Justin. I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management on here. I've got a podcast on Mondays, videos on Fridays here, and social media. I've got videos coming out almost every single day. We also have a newsletter and blog. There are links to that in the show notes. I put out blog posts every week and a newsletter every other week. Would love to have you join. All right, without further ado, let's get into this partnership. First, let me introduce these companies and how their technology works. Dexcom is based in San Diego, California. They've been around since 1999 and they put out their first sensor in 2004. Currently, they are on their seventh generation continuous glucose monitor. I'll say CGM moving forward for short. I'm wearing it right here. I have type one diabetes and I use this to measure my glucose readings every five minutes. And even better is that device talks to my insulin pump tells it how much insulin I need, how much it needs to hold back in order to keep my glucose levels in range. Dexcom also has a sensor called the Stello. This one is meant for people with type two diabetes or pre-diabetes. It can be purchased over the counter, currently only on the Stello website. And that device has its own app. Just for some context, over-the-counter CGMs is a pretty new thing. Stello just came out and there's also another one called the Abbott Lingo, which is over the counter and meant for anyone who wants it, unless they have diabetes. It is meant for anyone without diabetes. But we're in an interesting time right now where anyone can just go out, get a CGM, try it on and see how their lifestyle and their food they eat, their exercise affects their glucose. The way Dexcom sensors currently work and most CGMs is they test what's called interstitial fluid. They are not testing directly from the blood. So they are a little bit of a lag about 10, 15 minutes behind what your actual blood glucose is. But that interstitial fluid, there's a sensor inside that's testing it, giving you a reading sent to your phone every five minutes, at least with this CGM. Other CGMs can do it every minute. Now let's talk the Aura Ring. I actually didn't get one until I heard about this news because I'm in the diabetes industry. I knew I had to get one myself and test it out before the glucose features came out just so I can kind of be ahead. So Aura has been around since 2013. They were founded in Finland. In fact, one of the founders was inspired to create the ring after working on a project to develop IT systems for a chronic disease management and prevention. The first Aura Ring was introduced on Kickstarter in 2016 and the first one was sold in 2017. As of October, 2024, 
Aura had sold 2.5 million rings. The Aura ring costs about three to $400, depending on the generation you get and the style. Plus, you have to get a yearly subscription. You can pay monthly for Aura in order to get like the full capabilities of it, which amounts to about $70 a year. Not a huge fan of that, especially when you're paying so much for the ring, but that's the way it is, and I'm testing it out right now. So here's what Aura does. It gives insight into sleep, activity, and readiness by listening to your body's signals with three sensors. I'm gonna butcher this. Infrared photo, photo, photoplesmography sensors, photoplethmosography sensors, PPG for short. This measures heart rate and respiration. Then there's a negative temperature coefficient NTC sensor for body temperature and a 3D accelerometer that tracks movement. The Aura Ring tracks a bunch of biometric data such as heart rate, body temperature, blood oxygen levels, and sleep. It uses that data to calculate sleep, readiness, and stress scores and to provide insights on your health. Aura recently introduced a new feature called Meals where users can log the meals they eat. And I could see this feature going really hand in hand with glucose levels and seeing how the different foods that you log affect your glucose. Why is this so big? Well, I'm very excited to see what the correlation is between all of the different things Aura is tracking, whether it's sleep, exercise, heart rate, temperature, stress level, the quality of sleep, and comparing that to glucose readings. When am I going high? When am I having a crash and going low? When am I having a steep crash or when am I having a steep rise? Seeing that alongside glucose readings. Did you know there are 42 different factors for what can affect glucose readings, whether it be alcohol, quality of sleep, exercise, whether it's weightlifting or cardio and running. This is why managing diabetes isn't as simple as, oh, they're gonna be on an insulin pump, they're set. Every aspect of life from the food you eat and the exercise you have impacts glucose levels. And when you're someone with diabetes taking insulin, that can easily go wrong, whether it be too high of a glucose or too low, which could be scary because you could pass out. I've only had this ring for about a week right now and I've taken some screenshots showing my glucose levels side by side with my Aura ring. At first glance, it looks like there are some similarities in when my glucose levels are rising and falling based off of my Aura ring. I have a lot more digging to do, but my thoughts are for Dexcom to invest $75 million into this company, They've got to be wearing this. They've got to have people with diabetes wearing this that said, hey, I'm seeing a lot of relationships between these metrics. I think we should invest in this company. It feels promising, and I'm very excited to see what the two companies do together. The companies have said that they plan to have an integration together by the first half of 2025, that's super soon. And they also say that they're going to be cross-branding and selling each other's products. So. What I assume by hearing that is that their main focus will be the Aura Ring with Dexcom's Stello, that over-the-counter CGM. But my hope is as someone who wears the Dexcom G7, I have type 1 diabetes and a lot of other people are also using it, my hopes are that they still are able to integrate my levels with the Aura Ring. Just show me that information. I don't need to make medical decisions based off of it, but just show me it. Dexcom already has integrations for the Apple Watch, for Garmin. They're already connecting their readings to these apps. I don't see why they couldn't just do that with Aura Ring. So I hope that that is in their plans for this. But I wonder, does the FDA need to get involved for something like this? If you have any idea, let me know in the comments. I'd assume that the FDA doesn't need to get involved in this, but I could be totally wrong. But I'd love to hear your thoughts if you're kind of in it and know. All right, now let's get into non-invasive glucose technology because I've already kind of gotten into this on my social media, on my podcast, and I wanna kind of tell you about some of the players that I've already reported on. One company working on a non-invasive glucose monitor is called No Labs. They actually came on the podcast and the person who came on the podcast was named Steve Kent. 
He comes from Aura Ring. He led global health partnerships and corporate strategy there for three years, and he's been at No Labs for about three years. He came on the podcast about a year ago to tell me more about this device. The device uses a radio dielectric sensor in order to measure glucose readings through the skin. I'll butcher it telling you how this device works, but if you wanna learn more about it, I'll put a link to my podcast episode with him in the show notes. It's a promising device. I don't know how far out they are. It seems like they have a long way to go. And still, the device is pretty big. This isn't something that I think anyone's gonna wear for an entire day. And I think that it needs to get smaller and smaller, perhaps the size of a ring, in order for people to use this on a daily basis. But it is still promising that they're working on it and that they are having somewhat promising results. It has also been reported probably for a few years now that Apple and Samsung are both working on non-invasive CGM technology, probably to bring to the Apple Watch, the Samsung Gear Watch, the Samsung Ring. Their devices are already being used in many ways to track exercise, heart rate, blood pressure. Adding that CGM technology to those devices would be a natural next step. More recently, it's been reported that Apple's been working on software that helps people with prediabetes make better decisions based off of glucose readings. It's reported that this software isn't actually going to release, but that it is one step in this entire ecosystem that they are looking to build with their non-invasive CGM when it comes out. It's reported that Apple is still having issues with their non-invasive technology. Stephen Warwick from techradar.com says the current prototype is about the size of an iPhone, obviously too large, and there are problems with overheating and miniaturization. Samsung is also working on this technology too. They're hoping it can be added to Samsung's Galaxy line of health trackers, including its smartwatches and the Galaxy Ring. An executive at Samsung, Han Pak, says he thinks that non-invasive glucose monitoring technology will arrive in the next five years. The best news out of all of this is that all of these companies are now competing to be the first one to bring it to their device. Competition means it's going to speed up innovation and I am freaking here for this. I hope that the Aura Ring and Dexcom collaboration goes beyond just the Dexcom Stello and brings integration for people who have diabetes who would love to see their glucose readings from their Dexcom G6, their Dexcom G7 in the Aura ecosystem. I am looking forward to playing around with this ring. I'm going to review it. I'll probably angle it a little bit more in a diabetes way and see how my trends compare. Let me know what you think. If you're an Aura Ring user, let me know in the comments what you like about it, what it does for you, why are you paying $400 and then $7 a month to use this thing. I am very curious about it because it does sound like a lot of money and in the week that I've had this, it hasn't shown me, oh, I should be paying this monthly subscription for, for using this ring. What are the different statistics or metrics that it does take that kind of share information on how you should be living your life differently? Hey, I, I'm ready to be blown away by this thing. Stay tuned for a review on this. I've got a lot more content coming here. I've got the podcast on Mondays. I've got videos on social media all the time, so you should definitely follow those pages. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.